Hello, and welcome back to this video on how to use vSIM to model a plasma etching chamber in wafer processing. In this second video, I'll discuss how to set up the field boundary conditions, include the space-time dielectric function that we discussed last time, establish the particles and collisions, and write the necessary history needed to post-process the data. The field boundary conditions can be found by expanding the field dynamics option over in the elements tree and then expanding field boundary conditions. We have included four boundary conditions already. So the upper and lower boundaries are set to Neumann. So that's where we set the electric field to zero. The right boundary condition has a Dirichlet where the potential is set to zero. And the left boundary condition uh, uses the space-time function, which includes the RF source that you would have for this type of problem. So you could um, have a single frequency source, you could have a dual frequency source, you could also have a pulsed source that's on for a certain amount of time and then turns off for another fraction of time. To include uh, a or um, a space-time function or any constants or parameters, just right-click in this region and then find your constant parameter or space-time function. Uh, in the Poisson solver option is where you would specify uh, different numerical parts of the matrix inversion Poisson field solver. Uh, we're not going to change any of the ones that are already established, but you could have that flexibility in this region or in this area. Um, next to relative permittivity is where you would put your dielectric function. So if you right click here, then if you go to assign space time function, then you would find this space time dielectric function to include. And we discussed that last time. Now, if, um, navigating to the particle dynamics option, we can expand that. Um, and then we can see all of the particles and fluids that have been included in this simulation. So you can include your own particles species by right clicking on kinetic particles and just adding um, whatever type of kinetic particle you want to include. Uh, we already have two kinetic particles, so I will expand the electrons option here. Um, and um, the electrons options, well, actually, um, we just as we estimate some nominal des density in order to get the grid uh, resolution correct as well as the time step. Uh, you can choose the type of particle weight you want. If you think collisions are going to be play a big role in the number of particles per cell, then you'd want to use uh, managed weights. Uh, collisions are a small effect um, in these simulations, so I've just done constant weights. Uh, you can we I preloaded the simulation using this particle loader, so that's where I filled every region or the entire region with electrons. Um, the particle boundary conditions over here on this silicon on this silicon ring and then the quartz focus ring. Um, are such that when the, a plasma particle hits it, it, be, it gets absorbed. Uh, and therefore, the dielectrics can actually build up a charge um, as a function of time. If we averaged over the entire cycle, one might expect the two dielectrics to be charge neutral, uh, but that doesn't have to be this case at every time step. Um, and the accumulate boundary conditions um, are here, this electron accumulate cut cell silicon and electrons accumulate cut cell quartz. Because the particles are being lost, we had to come up with a method of injecting new particles. And we do that here through this settable flux electron emitter. Um, and so we're using a flux conserving boundary condition and injecting particles over at this right boundary so that we can keep, establish some level of um, steady state after a certain number of time steps. Now the space-time function is inserted right here, this Vx right E. So if we go back up uh, to space-time functions and find it, Vx right E, 
That's a, that's a Python uh, space-time function. And the name of that Python function is called emit vx right e. And you can find that Python function by pulling this out here. Um, and then just looking for wafer impact.py and opening it. And then indeed, my um, space -time, Python space time function is right here. You can define your own Python function and import that into vSim. The only rule is that the name of the file has to be whatever the prefix name is .py. So in this case, wafer impact .py. Now we've included a neutral fluid background, so argon neutral, and that is used for our collisions. So if you expand the reactions option and then expand particle fluid collisions, then we have included three collisions. You can add your own collision by um, right-clicking on particle fluid collisions and then add a collision type. We've already included three collisions. So, for example, an elastic collision has been included, which involves electrons and neutral argon. And for every collision type, you have to include a collision cross-section table, which we've done here. Okay, so lastly, I want to discuss the histories. Um, I have included one history called left ion loss. Uh, left ion loss is um, a, an absorbed particle log. So each time an ion hits um, this silicon, it collects data on that or collects information on the particle that hit that silicon wafer. Now, every absorbed particle log, has a, um, you have to associate with it um, some sort of uh, cut cell absorb and save or uh, accumulate boundary type condition and then once that link is established you then can add the information you need so if I right click on left ion loss then I can add a particle quantity and these are the quantities that you can save each time a particle hits the silicon wafer so the required um, information that needs to be saved is the position so this is a 2d simulation so that's Z and R of three velocity components, the energy, the weight of the particle. So in our case, the weight is simply one. Um, but if it's a managed or variable weight, then it would not be one. The charge, the time that it hits, so that we can bend the data in time, and the number of macroparticles in a single numerical particle. OK, so now that we've done all that, I will I haven't changed anything, but sometimes vSIM thinks it has, so I will save the simulation. And once it saves, go to the um, Run tab over on the far left, click it, and we have set up the simulation to run for 35,000 time steps, and we're going to save every 50. We, I wanted to run at least 20 to 30 RF cycles. So 35,000, I think, runs for about 30, 30 RF cycles. And then I wanted to save 10 to 12 data dumps per RF cycle. So I saved every 50. And then once you do that, you click the Run button right here, and the simulation will run. I've already uh, run it. And so once it's finished, you should see Engine completed successfully. And that's how you will know that everything turned out all right. Okay, so this concludes part two of the tutorial. In part three, we will analyze the results and visualize the data. Thank you for watching. If you have questions about vSIM or any other software developed by TechX, please, please visit www.txcorp.com.